Hey, what's going on, y'all? We back in the building, man. Hey, um, hey, I thank you. I thank everybody for you know supporting me. Um, if y'all haven't subscribed yet, make sure y'all you can go ahead and subscribe. Um, make sure y'all hit that notification bell, you know, so y'all can see all the rest of the heat that I'm dropping, so y'all can see all the rest of the the wisdom, knowledge, and understanding that I'm dropping, because I have a lot of good stuff for y'all. I'm trying to tell y'all, man. This video right here is going to be a good one, man. I'm trying to tell y'all this is going to be a good one. Um, crazy bone, right? I came up on this video last year, I believe. This was before I started doing these videos. Last year, I came up on this video of, of um, crazy bone exposing the industry exposing satan's agenda on on black men bro so um i had at, today i um i was like hold on man i thought about, i was like hold on bro i forgot all about this clip that i seen about crazy bone i have to let people know about this because this one right here is a big eye opener for the agenda that satan has on his people so i'm gonna go ahead and play destroyed the video, a generation damn so it says hello <clears throat> after more than 20 years I finally decided to tell the world what I witnessed in 1991, which I believe was one of the biggest turning points in popular music and ultimately American society. I have struggled for a long time weighing the pros and cons of making my story public as I was reluctant to implicate the, the individuals who were present that day. So look, so he says, between, late, between the late 80s and early 90s, I was what you may call a decision maker with one of the more established companies in the music industry. I came to Europe in the early 80s and quickly established myself in the business. The industry was different back then since technology and media weren't accessible to people like that, like they are today. The industry had more control over the public and had the means to influence them any way it wanted. All right. This may explain why in early 1991, I was invited to attend a closed door meeting with a small group of business, with business insiders to discuss rap music's new direction. Hmm. Rap music's new direction. Yeah. Little did I know we would be asked to participate in one of the most unethical and destructive business practices ever seen. Crazy. So, 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 so this was the meeting. The meeting was held at a private residence on the outskirts of Los Angeles. I remember about 25 to 30 people were were, were being there, right. most of them familiar faces. Among the attendees was a small group of unfamiliar faces who stayed to themselves and made no attempt to socialize beyond their circle. Based on their behavior and formal appearances, they didn't seem to be from our industry. Our casual, our casual, Chatter was interrupted when we were asked to sign the confidentiality agreement preventing us from publicly discussing the information presented during the meeting. Mm. Needless to say, this intrigued, in some cases, disturbed many of us. The agreement was only a page long, but very clear on matters and consequences which stated that violating the terms would result in job termination immediately. We asked several people what this meeting was about and the reason for such secrecy, but could not find anyone who had the answers for us. A few people re refused to sign and walked out. Nobody stopped them. I was tempted to follow, but but curiosity got the best of me. That's right. A man who was part of the unfamiliar group collected all the agreements from us. So now it's going to get to the good part because the meeting about to start. Talk to him, Jake. <clears throat> it says... Quickly after the meeting began, hold on, one of the industry colleagues who shall remain nameless like everybody else thanked us for attending. He then gave the floor to a man who only introduced himself by first name and gave no other details about his personal background. Mm. I think he was the owner of the residence, but that was never confirmed. He briefly praised all of us for the success we had achieved in our industries and congratulated us for being selected as a part uh, as part of this small group of decision makers. At this point, I began to feel slightly uncomfortable in the strangeness of this gathering. The subject quickly changed as the speaker went on to tell us that the respective companies we represented had invested in a very profitable industry, which could become even more rewarding with our active involvement. Damn. He explained that the companies we worked for had invested millions into, millions into the building of privately owned prisons and that our positions of influence in the music industry would actually impact the profitability. 
of these investments. Hmm. Then he says, I remember many of us in the group immediately looking at each other in awe and confusion. Mm -hmm. The more inmates, the more the government would pay these prisons mm -hmm. with us. At this point, my industry colleague who had first opened the meeting took the floor again and answered our questions. He told us that since our employees had become solid investors in this prison business, it was now in their interest to make sure that these prisons remain filled. Our job would be to help make this happen by making music which promote criminal behavior, mm. rap being the music of choice. Mm. He assured us that this would be a great situation for us because rap music was becoming an increasingly profitable market for our companies. And as employees, we'd also be able to buy stocks in these prisons. Immediately, silence came over the room. You could have heard a pin drop. Hmm. I remember looking around to make sure I wasn't dreaming and saw half of the people with dropped jaws. My days was interrupted when someone shouted, is this a fucking joke? At this point, things became chaotic. Right. Two of the men who were part of the unfamiliar group grabbed the man who shouted and, and attempted to remove him from the house. A few of us, myself included, tried to intervene. One of them pulled out a gun, put out a gun, and we all backed off. They separated us from the crowd, and all four of us was escorted outside. My industry colleague who opened up the meeting earlier hurried out to meet us and reminded us that we had signed an agreement and would suffer the consequences of speaking out about this publicly or even those who attended the meeting. Damn. I asked him, why was he involved with something so corrupt? And he replied, it's bigger than the music business and nothing we can do. And, oh, no, no, no. It's bigger than the music business and nothing we want to challenge without risking consequences. We all protested as the as they walked, as we walked back into the house. I remember word for word the last thing he said, "It's out of my hands now." Oh yeah, just. Oh yeah, I told you I had a good one for y'all today, man. Did y'all hear this, bro? Did y'all hear that? Did y'all not hear that, bro? The Most High asked you to please, please protect this man at all costs. Cause he wasn't supposed to put this out. He was not supposed to have put this out, bro. Tell you, man, things are coming out now, bro. All right, so what this man said, right? He said, the agenda started within, the, he said the um the 80s and 90s, like around the, that, the late 80s, 90s. That's when it started, the new agenda for what they wanted for music, right? Like y'all think about it though, right? Think about it. Think about the music that was, that was out in the 70s and 60s. Earth, Wind, and Fire, and all, all those groups, the Temptations, the heart, Five Heartbreaks. L listen to that music, bro. Listen to it. That music was 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 bringing unity to our people. You know what I'm saying? That music just felt good, bro. And then one, once you know, once like rappers like N.W.A. started coming out, and um, 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 Bone Thugs, all the all these type of groups like that, promoting like violence and stuff like that, they had that meeting. This, um, Crazy Bone said that the meeting had like different, you know, people in there, different people that they knew of, but he didn't want to disclose their names. It was more than likely it was probably like NWA and people like that, right? So, um, and again, he said the agenda was to, to, to promote violence, killing, stuff like this, to promote it, bro, because they they know they understand that that. Not not just young people, but not just black people, but especially like young, younger black men, bro. Like we're we're so easily influenced, and these the Esau, the, the, these white people, they know that, they know it, bro. That's why they push it. That's why they had this meeting, bro. And they tricked them into doing it. They tricked them into doing it. They didn't. They didn't know what they was doing for real. They didn't tell them what the real agenda was until they signed that paper. This is crazy, bro. And you wanna know what's crazy, man? Like, they, they know what they're doing. They they know they know that they're being used by Satan. They know that they're being used by Satan. And they also they also know that that we're that we're um the most highest people. They know this. They know this and Satan knows it. Satan lets them know this. 
we're the most highest people. That's why they're trying to destroy us so bad. They they want us they want us gone so bad. They trying everything that they that they can do. They trying everything that they can do to destroy us, bro. They said they want to promote this music so that so that they can continue to put continue to put our people in the prisons so that they can get money off of us. This is how evil they are. This is and they still doing that to this day, bro. And to this day, you know, like this was their agenda, and like it, it kind of died down a little bit, you know, like like between like the, like I'll say like 2000 and 2000 and 2001, all the way up to like 2003, 2004. Like I'm conscious of this, you know, and that's when it started coming back, you know, that that gangster rap music. That's when Jeezy started coming and, and Gucci and all these other rappers. Like, bro, I can say this because I've been through the same thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? M music, bro. It influences. It, it really influences the the black community, bro. Especially especially the younger the younger men, the younger generation, bro. Like when Jeezy came out, he was he was rapping about cooking cocaine and stuff like that, bro. Tell me why I went in, I went in the kitchen and got one of my mom's pots, and got my uh <laughs> my my brother's um 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 baby powder and I put water in it. I whipped it. I whipped it up, man. Like it was crack for real. And then I let it. <laughs> I put it under my bed and I let it sit. I let it sit for a few days. I put that joint up, up from under the bed, bro. That joint was, was hard like a rock, like crack. This is how music influences us, though. A lot of people don't understand. Think. Use your... Use your brain, bro. Use your brain. You got to be conscious of what's going on around you, bro. Be conscious of what's going on. Ask God to open your eyes. He'll open your eyes. But follow him, though. Follow him with all your heart. He will open your eyes to the truth. This is the truth right here, bro. You know? And then, like, after, you know, Jeezy came out and Gucci and all them came out, it really didn't stop. It really didn't die down too much, you know? Um, Like like I said, before before Jeezy and all them came out, it was like Nelly and all them, Chingy. All them people, like, it, it died down a little bit, but then, then that, and then after that, whew, that's when it started getting real bad. Cause then Sosa came out, Chief Keith came out. That's when it started getting real bad, bro. Once Sosa came out, Esau, the white people, they, the, the the executives that 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 run these record labels, that's Esau. The white people, they they saw this, they saw what was going on. They saw this, they was like, whoa, 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 whoa. time out, time out. They was like, time out, bro. Time out. I think we got something here. And they was right. Unfortunately, they they was right. Once he once he came out, that's when it just took off. It took off after that. When Sosa came out, that's when it took off. Like it really got bad. Like you think it was bad when NWA and all them was out. It really got bad when it when when Sosa came out. Then it was just like a chain reaction, and it's still kind of going on until this day. It's kind of dying down. That drill rap is kind of going down a little bit. But like, bro, that that just it t it took off, man. Like look look at look at our black men now, bro. Look at our black men now. Like, it, bro, I'm I'm glad I didn't grow up as a teenager in, in this time. If I if I grew up in this generation, it's no telling where I would be. I don't think no telling if I would be in jail, bro, or 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 dead, man. Like these kids out here got all types of guns, switches and stuff. We ain't had that stuff when I was a when I was a teenager, bro. All we had was was dang on three eighties and thirty eights. These kids got everything now, man. And then it, it, it more than likely it ain't gonna do nothing but get worse. But guess what though? That's that's why God is waking up his people, like me and and and, and hundreds of others. You know what I'm saying? We out here, we out here doing God's will. Oh yeah, we out here doing God's will. We 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 out here really trying to save souls. We out here really trying to save lives, bro. We love our people. We don't want to see us perish, bro. We don't want to see this, man. Especially me, man. I, I, I hate it, bro. And, I, and I'm seeing it. I'm seeing everything unfold right, like right in front of my eyes, bro. And I see what's going on, bro. And you can't talk to everybody about it because they don't understand, you know. But um, man, I just I just want to go ahead and let um get this message out of there, man. You know, so people so I can give people clarity um about what's what's really going on, you know. Because a lot of people don't know this, bro. A lot of people don't know the core of it. I just gave y'all the core of what's going on right now. This is the core right here. This is the core of, of why the music is like it is until this, to this day, and 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 how it's influencing our our, our black our black men, 
our black kids. This is the core of it. I just told y'all the core. If this is the truth, so um, like I say, like you know, if you read your Bible, God says if you don't want to hearken into the truth, then He will turn you over to a strong delusion so you can believe a lot. So hey, man, if y'all haven't subscribed yet, make sure y'all go ahead and subscribe. Um, hit that like button, man, so we can get these uh, messages out here. Hit that bell. I love y'all. Talk to y'all later.